my name is Stanley Genova, and this is Afro Politics Panel Discussion on Pigna TV in Diaspora. Pigna TV in Diaspora is a platform, an online platform established to unite Africans back home and abroad in order to celebrate their achievements. And today we have on the panel Bongi. Bongi, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everybody, wherever you are. My name is Bongi Tladness, and you are on Pigna TV in Diaspora. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, good morning, viewers. Good morning, Prof. He's still on Cleveland TV in Dallas for reporting live from Nigeria. Good to be here. Okay. Hi, it's Cleveland TV, and for my viewers out there, I would like you and um, invite you over to subscribe to Cleveland. You go to cleveland.com so you can be part of this program and watch us our previous uh, programs. Okay, today we have a subject on leadership. It's actually leadership in Africa. We're going to look at how leadership in Africa is empowering Africans. Are we as Africans reaping the dividends of leadership in Africa? Because leadership is something that improves the life of people in any in our society. Just like the John Maxwell rightly said, everything falls and rises in the place of leadership. So when we have good leadership in place, so people will share and benefit from the dividends of that leadership. So the question today is, are we as Africans reaping the dividends of leadership? So I'm going to pose that question to Bongi this morning. Uh, Bongi, what's your view on this very subject, leadership in Africa? Are we reaping the dividends of good leadership in Africa? Okay, I would say yes and, and no at the same time. Uh, yes, because there are certain other places and areas in Africa where they are able to see the benefits and there are other countries where you, you don't. And uh, why am I saying no to those ones that are, that are not benefiting any dividends in, in, in what's happening with the leaders uh, that were chosen or the ones that were selected for them to be able to make changes? I'm saying no because people are not, um, the, the po poverty, if I may talk about poverty, poverty is still there. People are still suffering in other areas in Africa where they don't have food, they don't have clothes to wear, they don't have uh, shelters. Some people find themselves being able to build shelters with trees by themselves or with plastics, but yet they have they have leaders uh, who were chosen to, to, to change their lives. So it shows that there are certain people who are still suffering in Africa and that must be fixed. Okay, that's very correct because um, we always have the picture of Africa being that of impoverished continent. But um, if you look at it from the other way around, you find out that we in Africa have all it takes to provide good leadership. Unfortunately, in some instances, we don't have that leadership. Mm -hmm. We have the mineral resources that can provide good job opportunities for graduates who are coming out from schools, but those opportunities are not being used. Like you said, poverty has been one of the major menaces in okay. Africa that is actually robbing the people of their inviolable destiny. No, and that in, in terms of, uh, if I, I would interject, in terms of, of, of the people that are benefiting, again, it's still not a good benefit because those that are benefiting mostly is the people that knows whoever we, who is in the leadership. You only benefit if you are, you are part of the person who's in the leadership. It's all about selfishness where the, the people that, that can only be helped or that can only benefit are people who are known in the leadership uh, uh, structure, per se. Okay, that is to say, um, in, in Africa, what we experience in most cases is actually what I, what I can term as self-centered leadership. Because if one is in leadership and all he does is to incorporate his relatives, his yeah. uh, friends and colleagues. Family members, yeah. Then, then that has become a different thing. It's no longer leadership, okay? Because leadership is about carrying the people along. It's, it doesn't have to be your family. It doesn't have to be your friends. Exactly. Okay, that, that's very correct. And that's what we're experiencing. That's why we have some of the issues 
we have today. Okay, Frank, over to you. I want to see, I want to hear your view on leadership in Africa. In your view, are we actually enjoying leadership in this part of the world? Well, thanks, Professor. <laughs> if you ask me if you are, I'll tell you, no, we are not. And I think it still boils down to what Bongi rightly said, selfishness on the part of our leaders. If you really look at it, discover that a lot of group leaders, leadership in Africa in total, which is the one for the elites and then the one for those below the elites. Okay. Now, with the amount of wealth, with the amount of natural resources that we've been blessed with in Africa, we don't really have any reason to cry or to say that our sick people still struggling to eat in Africa. People still struggling to have um, accommodation. People okay. still struggling to put their children through schools. People are still struggling to have their daily needs. We ought not to be crying for that. But if you look at it, you discover that the elites that I would say, I would like to use that word, they've taken authority over the small thing we will be able to discover and they're using it to feed even their own families alone, leaving the less privileged where they are. It is not really helping anybody because leadership is supposed to be known as influence, influencing people. When you bring somebody on board to lead you, what are you doing? You brought in somebody to teach you the way. Now, the leaders in Africa, I did leave teaching the masses the way. They are not. They are concerned about just their own policies, their own pockets, their own back accounts alone. And then once it's filled, they feel mm, every other thing is, um, is, is the way it ought to be, which is not supposed to be to be like that. I was yeah. surprised about um, a few days back and some, um, I think a presidential candidate was um, writing my station in Port Harcourt, and then they came to like visit uh, one or two places here. And then I heard later, but they didn't actually uh, involve the press in that visit. But we're going to understand that it moves from local governments to local governments, to market places, to people's houses, personal and private houses, which is how it's supposed to be. Because when you move around like, uh, at, like that, you are able to decipher things happening in that environment. Because you can only know how to effect change if you know what is happening in an environment. If you don't know what is happening, you can't effect any change. I don't know if you get me. So for me, leadership in Africa, I don't think we are even way close to it. That's it. Okay, that's Franka for you. Um, leadership in Africa, we are too far away from reality. And I can't agree less because I'm an African and I live in Africa. Um, in most cases of the truth, Africa's uh, major predicament, those who occupy the driver's seat, you know, is of the opinion that they are driving the people's interests. Mm. Meanwhile, in the recent, they are actually taking advantage of those. That's it people they are supposed that's to do. In most, in most cases, these leaders who have voted into power has turned out to become yokes on the neck of people who put them there to serve them. So this has been the problem that we're having. The problem in Africa is not lack of money, it's not lack of resources, it's not lack of diamond, gold, and whatever you can think you of. Have mineral. Surplus in Africa. Not that's that's but the problem we have in Africa is deficit of leadership. Exactly. How can we have all these things and we'll be running to the West for help? Which help do we need? Because we already have the mineral resources. We exactly. need to take advantage on them, develop ourselves, develop these mineral resources and use it to develop our countries. But alas, the opposite is the case because we run to the West and expose our mineral resources to the West. They read these things and take it back to the West, refine them and bring them back to us to get them exactly. on a very expensive um, cost. Yes. And then by so doing, we devalue our economy, we devalue our currency. Well, how is it that we have gold and our currency is not competing with dollars, it's not competing with pounds? We have the oil and our currency is not competing with the Western world, so something is wrong somewhere. Is lack of leadership. Now, the question is, I want to ask you, Bongi, yeah. what is your view? What is your view on our leaders not being able to take advantage of vast mineral resources in Africa? Where, where and how did we get it wrong? Yeah, no, thank you so much, Tendi. Uh, what I can say is that what's happening is the fact that we have been resources and we find ourselves having to give them out and they come back to us again be sold it's because our leaders they don't believe in the talent they have they don't believe in 
the, the genuineness and excellence in, in their people. They don't believe that their people are capable. They don't see potential in, 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 in their people. And if you can see again, the very people that we have that have that potential, they go out there and go and go make crafts out there that are going to come back to us. If you can see the people that are busy creating the resources and make them crafts are our people again who came from Africa, who come from Africa, going abroad to create the same crop that's going to come back to us and be sold by us. Exactly. So what are we having as leaders who don't trust what they have? We're having leaders who don't believe in the potential and talent and excellence in their own space. Exactly. I that is so. what it is. And yeah, if you look at it, in my opinion, the truth is that there is no society that we succeed without a solid structure. And that structure is determined by leadership and exactly. the people. Exactly. The people put in leadership to engineer the progress of a society, and that becomes the structure. Exactly. Now, no society is going to succeed without a solid structure. In my view, in Africa, there is no solid structure for leadership. Because yeah. if, there, if there is, at this time, we're not going to be experiencing what we're experiencing because why are we going for aid for our kids to go to school when we have the resources? Exactly. We're crying for electricity when we have all it takes to produce enough electricity to power companies and, and firms to become a productive continent, to empower our people, our youth, our future. So. Um, Franka, on this note, what do you think that African leaders should do that they are not doing? What do you think they can do differently in order to bring back the hope of the people, to restore hope? Because the hopes of Africans are, are almost dashed at this point. People no longer believe in their leadership. Not because they don't want leadership, but because their leadership are actually disappointing them. So they 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 resorted to self leadership, to personal development, trying to create a means of livelihood to sustain the hard times created, not created by nature, but created by our own leadership. So, in your own view, what do you think these leaders should do better that they've not done before? But what do you think they should do differently to get it right? All right, you know, part of the question I wanted to ask our guests for today was the fact that, you know, at times they come on board and they make, every four, four years they make promises, okay? Now, we discover that there's always a difference between a verbal promises and what we actually get at the end of it all. Okay, now, I think Bomi just mentioned something about Africa is not even taking advantage of the, the vast... Um, knowledgeable people we have in the country itself. I won't even start with that. Nigerians or our leaders, rather, or like in Africa, as you're discussing now, I, I want to believe that before we start fighting for our independences, we never really took time to learn from the, from the whites, from the Western people. I think that's the basic problem we have. You know, we've got just more knowledge, a bit of knowledge from them. And the next thing we start screaming, oh, we want to be on our own. We want to manage things on our own. So they gave us the freedom. And when we got the freedom, we discovered that we didn't really know what we are supposed to do and what we are not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's take a look at, for example, in, I always refer to Nigeria. In my country, you see, in, there's a place called Kogi State, where you have large, okay, I repeat again, large amounts of what's called rock. Rock can, that can be easily converted to the the cement we 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 we, we bring we what I now the cement we bring in from the outside country to Nigeria. Okay. Mm. Now in my country in a, in a small village called Igweben, in my own place, we have a vast amount of um, the kind of soil, the fine kind of rock that is being used to to manufacture the ties that we import into the country. Now, how does this relate to the leaders? If the leadership or those in leadership knows that these things are there, they can take advantage of them, 
create a niche for it, set up a company where you bring in the youth of that locality to start making productions of these things. Yeah. And if the money is not there, you can actually call it investors within the country itself to exactly. do that. Okay, but Africans, we are not doing that. And our leaders, they are not even thinking about that as well. Yeah. So I would say, but if you really look at it, you discover that most of these people are not even aware of these natural resources. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you get me, bro. Most of them are not aware of it. So if you are not, if you are a leader, and you don't know what is going on in your environment, what kind of leadership yes. is that? What kind of leaders are you if you don't know what is going on in your immediate environment? Yeah, Frank, I think not leadership. If I were to also interject, I would say again that it's ignorance of, of, of our leaders. Exactly. And again, our leaders, when once they are in, all they see is for their pockets or if, if they're mm -hmm. to, to live large and to exactly. be successful. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't even research. A person will be a leader when they in research. They don't look around. They don't even go to Does the it. community. They don't go to the people to be able to yes. see what's going on in the communities of the people. But then they exactly. are those, those those particular communities. Exactly. And and we we we'll, we'll like to bring in selfishness into this as well. I've discovered one thing in Africa. We are so comfortable with where we are. Okay. We want to be the head. We want to be the one in charge of everything. So even when we see somebody with a brighter idea to effect change. In that position, we don't bring that person in because we are so scared of bringing the person in and then taking possession of where we've, uh, we've always been or we've possessed for a very long time. For me, leadership isn't supposed to be like that. Leadership, I, I do one thing with myself. I tell people around me, see, if I am doing something and then someone comes on board and does the same thing far better than I am doing it, you know what I do? I step back and allow the person to take the lead. That is how leadership should be. True. Leadership shouldn't be about a particular person. Mm -hmm. Leadership should be about changing people, changing your environment, using the best hands, the best natural resources, the best human efforts and the human brain to change a society. <laughs> the problem is, is, is saying, yeah, the problem again with our leadership is that uh, we are being led by other leaders abroad. We are not. We yeah. are. Not our leaders are not taking charge. Our leaders are not putting their feet down to, to lead. Yeah, but, real. but if you look at it, we've sold ourselves to them. It is not their fault that they are still leading, even when we call ourselves leaders here. The main leadership is actually being run by those abroad. We've mm -hmm. given them that hand to do that. Exactly. That's because how I we, see it. Anyway. We actually portrayed ourselves, we portrayed ourselves as, as can't. We portrayed ourselves as, as as enable, like we can't, we not, we, we don't know what to do. So we need yeah. you because we are we are enabled, like we are disabled, or maybe we are enabling. We can't sit in things. So we need you. So when they saw that, they took advantage of it and they started now leading us in our own in our own space in, in, indirectly, even after having independence. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Prof, 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 I would like to, let me ask you this question, Professor Stanley, Professor Ba. Now, how do you see either, for example, the cocoa that you use in producing things like Bovita, okay, like meal and the rest of them, is gotten from Africa. Yet, what do we do? The white comes and get this in, or we export them on our own, we have vets and they take it to them, okay? Now, they convert it into the Bovita and the, the other beverages in, in quotes, and then they send it back to us at our own <laughs> high rates and all that. Even at times we are unable, most of us in Africa are unable to really buy these things. Yet the, the things, materials needed for that production actually got in here in Africa. How do we really look at that? Because if I was a leader, a political leader, and I go to other countries and I see things of it, I'll be ashamed of myself. Mm. It's something that Nigerians should, that Africans should start Sit down for a while. Think, what am I even leading? What kind of a leader am I? Mm. What kind of leadership am I giving out? Am I actually affecting anybody in my circle? Let, let's even say friends now, not even in the entire uh, uh, environment now. It doesn't make sense, actually. I don't really know how we start getting it because uh, a friend of mine will always say we blame the system for the problems or the failures in Africa. And I try to argue with him, no. The people themselves have a role to play. And the people are not playing their own role. If you know what is wrong, speak out. If you know what you can do, see it out. But what do we do even as a people? We start taking advantages of each other. We take advantage of each other, which for me, like, seriously, like I always say, Africa's problem 
is a huge one. And if we want to solve it, it lies in every African to be able to provide solutions to it. And then okay. people, okay. people who, have, uh, who don't have a, a leadership potential or a leadership skills, but then they want to be leaders. Again, another yeah. problem in Africa, we, we having competition. We, we, we have this thing of competing. When you know that you are not uh, about that, that's not who you are. You can't lead because you're not a leader. If you're not a leader, don't lead. Leave the leadership to other people who can. So the problem is that other people would want to lead when they know that they don't have leadership. leadership Capability. Or, 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 or maybe exactly. authority to do it or to be able to lead. Okay, thank you, Frank Abonge. And it's still um, Afro politics um, panel discussion on climate, on climate TV. Now, at this point, I would like us to go to a break, go for a break. When we return, we're going to continue with this discussion. So let's go for a break now. Clevenard in Diaspora Television is an internet online TV service. What sets us apart is a unique combination of hit African content, first and exclusive international free movies, series, musics, news, events, documentaries, tourism, teleshopping shows, youth TV programs, and live interviews. Clevenard Diaspora Television is available throughout Sub-Saharan Africa and to the diaspora markets worldwide. Take your entertainment with you wherever you go. Watch on your smartphone, tablet, laptop, smart TV, depending on your device. Watch free movies with Clevenard Movies Television. Stop searching for free movies websites and watch Clevenard Movies Television. Watch your favorite African shows anywhere at any time. Don't forget to check out our top five TV channels created to get you informed. TV1, Clevenard in Diaspora Television. TV2, Clevenard Youth Television. TV3, Clevenard Movies Television. TV4, Clevenard Teleshopping Television. TV5, Clevenard Tourism Television. To start watching, sign up at www.clevenard.com and follow the easy steps. Once you're done, log in to the Clevenard website or app on your device, click on any one of our five TV channels, and hit play. We will be very satisfied and happy to welcome you to our team as one of our new business partners. Contact info at clevenard.com plus 34 631 279811. Website www.clevenard.com. Hello, viewers, and welcome back. It's still Afro Politics Panel Discussion on Clevenard TV in Diaspora. Today, we actually are supposed to have a special guest on this panel, but unfortunately, we couldn't catch up due to unforeseen circumstances. We're supposed to have the person of Barrister Prince Adewale at the wire of the of Nigerian presidential candidate of SDP. But well, due to unforeseen circumstances, it's going to make it. But still on this platform, we're talking about leadership in Africa. So you welcome back. At this point, I want to look at um, policies because we're talking about leadership in Africa. You know, year in, year out, we, we find ourselves in a space where government come up with pretty and fantastic policy names. But that's where it ends. You know, it ends there. That's simply because those with zero understanding um, with a particular policy or what policies entails are the ones in government directing the affairs of the people. So at the end of the day, it ends in lyrics. So they just read out these policies and nothing is done. Another thing again in Africa is that um, our leaders lack coherent vision of the government needed to implement the change that the people are crying out for. Because they don't understand their own environment. They have uh, mineral resources. They live with these mineral resources. They don't even know what to do with them. In instances where they invite um, foreign investors, they actually come in to take advantage of these mineral resources because they don't know the value of okay. these mineral resources. So they give them away to the Western world and we are left with nothing. Looking beggarly to the rest of the world, looking for aids 
from the Western world when we actually have what it takes. We should be giving aid to the Europeans and the Americans, but it is not the case. The case here is opposite. We are receiving aid, but we have the resources. Mm -hmm. And resources cost um, economy, but unfortunately, that is not happening. Now, when you look at these things, you find out that policies in leadership, whether in politics and the leadership of our nations, has actually impacted negatively to the progress of our nations in Africa. So what that means is that we need to start looking at for leaders in Africa who understand policies and what it takes to make policies, progressive policies that can bring in the economy, that can revive the economy, that can create a future for the people. And that's what we're lacking. We don't have that. We actually have people who have different philosophy about leadership, whose philosophy about leadership is to acquire uh, material possessions mm. you know, when they have the opportunity, instead of you know, developing the mineral resources and the people, they actually uh, keep acquiring things and at the end of the day, that's all they achieve in their position of leadership, which is very sad. How do we get leadership in Africa whose focus is to create policies that will change our society, that will manage our resources, that will create a future for our youth, the young ones who are coming out from schools, and the young ones who intend going to school? We have adult school kids in Africa. So how do we get this kind of leaders? Not that we don't have them, but how do we push them into the corridors of power so that they can be created? Because what we have in corridors of power are people whose interests are not to develop the place for the people, but to enrich themselves because they believe in getting things to live instead of living to get things. So what do we do in this respect? Um, well, yeah, I'll leave that for you. What's your view? Yeah, Mr. Stanley, uh, what I can say about that, especially in, in education, let's talk about education. This is a, a very serious one. Education, for me, education system is not helping us at all because they are not teaching the actual things that are needed for our children to be able to understand what's happening around their spaces and around their environment. If we can have education that is straight to, straight to the point, is straightforward, teaching the future, teaching what needs to happen, teaching what is what has to be, that way we'll be able to have good leadership and we'll, have, we'll, we'll be able to produce good leaders because they'll be knowing what to do, they'll be understanding what must happen. I understand that sometimes a child and uh, maybe a, a, a kindergarten will not be able to know what's happening up there. Yes, it's okay, we do understand that, but then there's a certain level of education where it can start to say now, it's time now to teach what the child sees, to teach, if, if I have to teach a child about how to make a, a, a furniture or how to make the chair that they're sitting on, let it be to, 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 to bring people who will be practical with, with the children to bring people who will, the teachers who will tell children about what they are using. Because our children are using things, but they don't even know what's going on with those things. They are seeing even their own toys. They are playing with the toys, but they didn't know, they don't know how the toy was produced. They don't know where it's produced. So those are the things that I'm thinking, you know, in terms of education, there's a lot of error in education because our children are being taught things that they're not even gonna be able to use in the future. Exactly. And uh, what you just said now is it, really worrisome that in Africa, we have graduates who went to school, for example, as engineers, but they have nothing to produce. Engineers who doesn't know how to build bridges, who doesn't know how to fix cars, to manufacture cars, is a shame. So, I mean, that's wasted years in higher institution. Yeah. It means it means the curriculum there is just obsolete. 
So yeah. one will go to school to while away time for years, you come out, you have nothing upstairs to do. No, no. It, it, it's, it's, it's all the theory, it's all theory. Like with, with, with our education system in Africa, it's all theory. They don't have that uh, system to literally, as much as it's there practically, but the practical of it is not enough. Where now a, a person will be done in university, but then they were they were at university, but then they can't even do that for sure. They have to go back again to be trained again. But then you're from school, but then you need again to get training when you your, your parents have spent money there at school for you to learn a particular thing about engineering. But then when you now be having to work, you have to now again be trained in that particular company. So it, it's, 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 there's a problem with our education system. There's a serious problem with, with it. Yeah, I, 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 I think I should call me there. And uh, what I want to say about that is this. Africans, we have outdated curriculums. And the first thing is that our leaders are not even talking in this regard. I don't think they even know that there's something seriously wrong with this. They don't. Okay? Now, this is, a, this is a, the 21st century where you have people or children, 10 years old, 12 years old, being equipped with what you call ICT yes. and technology. They are very yep. good in it outside the shores of, uh, uh, mm -hmm. of Africa. But right here in Africa, what we still teach our children is this, memorizing A to Z, and memorizing like 1 to 100. Now, at the end of it all, you see even the private sector taking advantage of all this. Exactly. Okay? Now, you pay millions of naira to take a child through school. Exactly. At the end of the day, he goes back home to learn a trade outside what he was supposed to learn in school. Exactly. Now, I would like to say this. I was already in uh, the media profession even before I went to school. That helps me a lot. But 90% of my course may didn't have that advantage. So they were early in school. We spent five good years in the university learning how to, how to write. You are not even practicalizing it. They don't teach you how to practicalize. They tell you, just take it home, go and write. And you hmm. wonder and ask yourself questions. What am I supposed to learn from? Okay. Well, what, don't now, my case, exactly. Now, my case are in private school now. We can't even put them in government school because you end up wasting your time there. Okay? Now, 90% of the homework they give to these children, I, as a mother, end up being the one doing it for them at home. And then at times I have to go to the school and ask the proprietors, excuse me, I don't understand you guys. Exactly. You give part of 90% of your work to the parents to help you do. Now, what does your, your teacher that you employ that will pay exactly. school fees and then you pay salary? What are they now teaching the children? Why are they, why are they now making you a teacher? Why must they cut with the kids? Thank you. Things Thank that you. you why did you give your kids to them? That's that's my point. Thank that's you. That's exactly. That's so, what am I paying school fees for? Why? Exactly. So, if, if, for example, I don't have the time to attend to my children, who does that? For those parents that don't have that time to attend to the children, or they are not sound enough to attend to those children, who does that? Who covers up that lapse for them? Yes, it's, it's definitely Africa for you, Franca, that there's a lot of error, and especially the error that begins with education. That's where it begins. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it's, when... It's so, sorry, Professor, it's so, it's, so, it's so pathetic that in the advent of ICT, you know, when... During the advent of ICT about it, let's say a few years ago, 10, 12 years back, we have lots of people being laid off jobs. And then you see us in Africa who keep complaining, ah, and they're driving us from our jobs, the government is not helping each other, they didn't do that, they didn't do that, fine. But I want to tell you that 10 years later, in the next couple of months or in the next couple of years, serious worse than that, well, than what we experienced 10 years ago, is still going to take place. Why? Because there are in, in improvements in ICT as it stands now. And Africa will still not learn from what happened to us 10 years ago. We are still taking the same road we took 10 years ago, still working on it. Now, the few ones that have remained in employment, in the next couple of years, we have issues because you will not be able to compete. The elites will have learned from this and then taken their children out of the country and they groom their children to be able to fit into the society of them. Mm. But we... On 80%, the other 80% that is left, what are we doing? Where will we stand when there is a revolution of ICT one more time? It's, it's, it's really pathetic. And, uh, yeah. I don't know the leaders that are listening to us, and I really want them to like start thinking about these days. Let's start moving ahead of the world. Or if we can't move ahead of, of world or, or the world all of 
technology. At least let's start moving step by step with it. If, 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 I, if, if Frank, if I were to talk about the uh, African system, I would talk yeah. about the fact that uh, other countries, if I were to talk about other countries outside abroad, you find that uh, their kids at the age of 16, they're already driving. At the age of, at a, at the age of 16, yeah. we already have a doctor. Then wh why? Exactly. How, how is it that our, our kids are not able to do that? If another child can do something, because we are all human beings, if another child can do something exactly. in, in another country somewhere, and then ours can't, it shows that there's a, a, an error is, is it's within the education system. Because if my child can't be able to do what another child abroad can do, and uh, here I'm taking my child to school as well as the same, uh, simultaneously as, as the same as the other child is, is, is taken to school out there, it's a problem. It shows that here there's a, there's a, there's a delay in everything. There's a delay exactly. in what we do. Everything that we do in Africa here, it's, it's always a delay. But then you yes. find that countries, a kindergarten child already is being taught serious things like chores or how to do this, how to fry an egg. But then you will not teach your three, three year old in Africa to fry an egg. But then you find that to develop the brains of their kids out there in, in, in abroad, they start teaching their kids such things in the early age for their brains to develop exactly. well and to be able to develop faster. But then our kids are, are delayed because, you know, of the system around us and the system being also part of leadership. As we are talking about leadership today, definitely the whole era of system begins with the leadership That's we it. have in Africa. Yeah. That's yeah. so right. Um, but, but some of the things uh, Bongi and Franka, you've said already, that is so true. You know, there is something that we are not confident in Africa when it comes to leadership and um, education. We also need to consider the fact that in this part of the world, there is sabotage in academia. Many people don't think about that. There yeah, is. There is a, it's a sabotage. I like that, Stendi. It's a sabotage. Yeah, it is. A sabotage that has to do with the kind of policies that our leaders are dishing out to the people because our leaders have allowed themselves to become puppets yes. for sabotage by powers that be from the West. So our education system, educational system, is the way to because our leaders wanted it so. Mm, yes. People are benefiting from that state. Somewhere, Stanley. Yes. So, then, so, hence, you are really sabotage. I like that word sabotage because the sabotage comes from the the fact that the Western countries are seeing potential. We are a threat. We yes. are a threat, but then our own leaders are not recognizing that. No, they recognize that. You see, the greed is greed, greed, and uh, and the passion to acquire material things that has put them in that corner. We have all the power that we need in this world to develop Africa. But when we, when we are consent to this level of sabotage in academia, this is what we get. All you get is paper, certificates. Exactly. In, this, in this world, it's no longer about certificates. It's it about doesn't. defending the certificate that you have. If you are an engineer, what do you produce? Yes, the practicality of it. We need practicality. Yes. And it's practicality that, that is absent. There is it. How competent are you as a doctor? We have African doctors who are frontline doctors in America, in Europe, across yes, the world. Exactly. But mm -hmm. They have the equipment, the necessary facility to develop their skills. But we don't have that many facility here. But we have the resources. We can put the facilities in place. Why is it that when our people go abroad, they become the best, better than the West? Exactly. exactly. Yes. So it means there is a sabotage back yes. home in Africa. Yes. And we have to hold our leaders accountable for this sabotage. We have to. Therefore, yes. therefore, we need to start sensitizing our youth, the young people who are the future of Africa. Look, it's not business as usual. You have to start talking. You have to start advocating for good governance in your country, in your environment, because this is your future. Leadership determines the destiny of the people. 
That's what it is. So we can afford to be putting people in leadership whose goal is just to enrich themselves. They don't care what happens to the generation. Yeah. The issue of sabotage in academia is a serious one. You go to our university, what do you get? All you get is paper. That's what they give you. you waste your time on two years. Five good years. Five, five wasted good years in the, in the come back, not be relevant. Exactly. Not be relevant, not being competent. So what's the use? We can put the necessary equipment there, facilitate the schools. You see, I made a research some time ago. I found out that some of our higher institutions in Africa is still using materials of 1942 in their schools. Those materials have not been improved upon for the additional schools. So tell me what someone is going to do in this modern world with materials that were developed in 1942 that have not been touched since then, it has not been improved upon. So this is what we have in our society. When they come out from school, they are, they are obsolete. What they have is obsolete. They can do anything. So it's a serious concern. It's a serious concern. So at this point, it means we also need political power to change our nations. It means we have to start um, advocating for good governance, good leaders in the place of leadership. And what it means is that even political leaders who are vying for offices should be competent enough to defend their office. They must have what they are doing before they want to vie for any office. What is their handwork? What is their background? What is their academic qualification? Mm. I mean, what is their character? How have they fared over the years? When they were exactly. in a small what did they do? When they exactly. were running an organization, how did they run the organization? Mm. Exactly. To be put into consideration, there should be track record of people who will come out to sacrifice for the populace in the place of leadership. So there is that. Um, before we go, before we go, because our time is running, what would be our advice today to our leaders and our youth out there? We have the leaders, we have the young ones who are expecting so much from our leadership. What do we have to say to these two parties? The leaders and the youth. The youth is the strength of any nation. So what will be our advice before we call it quits for today? Okay. With me, with me, I would say, Stendi, thank you so much for the platform again. Um, I would, I would say, with the with the leaders, our my our leaders must must consider what's happening around. They must look around and consider what's happening around and be able to help with what's happening around. And again, they must understand the 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 resources we have, the minerals we have what must happen with them instead of them getting out there to be able to be crafted and come back to us and then when they come back they're all expensive and we have to now buy also from them i mean it doesn't make sense for me so they need to understand why they were they were leaders or they were, they were, they were selected or elected in the first place they need to understand their role they need to understand their position and their position is to change what needs to be fixed or what needs changing around their communities and they need to go to the communities and ask them what they need and be able to know from them not assume or not think not, not think for them that they need something when when they never even researched if it really is what is needed and when 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 it when it has to come to the youth now with the youth i'm asking the leaders again that can you please look into the uh, curriculum, look into 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 in, into uh, the education, the academia of 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 the kid, of our children, and change the whole system, because it's not helping our kids. It's not helping our kids. What is happening? It's a sabotage that you said. We are being told what to do, especially in academia. Our children are being given material that is not even there out there the material that is suppressing and oppressing our nation, I mean, not our nation, our Africa. So we need the whole shift in education because that's where our leaders will be coming from. Yes. 
Thank you very much. That's it. Um, people um, consenting to suppress, to marginalize, to oppress mm. the intelligence, the capacity, the skills, and the future of our young people in Africa. In because Africa. Africa is a threat to the rest of the world. The truth is this. The future of the world in the next 50 years relies on Africa. Africa, of course. That's right. years, they rely on Africa. There will be no evil without Africa. There will be no America without Africa. We've got everything what it takes to rule the world. And it's a threat. It's about time we wake up and take our place and do the right thing and sensitize, conscientize our people to know that, look, you have, you have all it takes. Time will come when you don't need to travel to America to study, to Europe to study. We mm. get every, have everything here. We need to develop. Yeah, yeah, our our it's, already there, it's already there. It just needs yeah. it just to be put out there. It just needs to be structurized. As you said, we need a structure. We just need a structure in our country. There's nothing we don't have in, in, our, in our Africa. There's nothing we don't have in Africa. There's nothing we don't have. We just need exactly. everything is there. We just need a structure. Exactly. Okay, Franca, um, what would be your advice to our leaders and our youth? Yes, right. Thank well, you so much once again. Uh, my advice to our leaders is this. Like I said earlier, if you know you don't have the capability to effect changes, why don't you just step down and then support someone that has that strength to be able to do that? You know, leadership shouldn't be just about title, bearing a big title, being considered a very big person, okay? Having a title of, oh, he's a professor, oh, he's a, he's a president of, of, of the country, or he's a governor. It shouldn't be like that. You are taking the lives of people mm. in your hands. You are taking advantages of people. So if you don't know what to do, if you know you are not qualified for a particular don't do person, it at all. don't mm -hmm. just go there at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. you can actually push in people that have that wisdom, the vision and the knowledge to take things or to make things, you know, turn things around. You don't have to be there simply because you just want to be that title. That's my advice for the leader. Then for the youth, you have to learn that even as a student, whatever they teach you in school, one thing you shouldn't let any teacher or environment do to you is make you timid. Never allow the system make you timid. Yeah. Education is not complete if you are not bold enough to defend what you went there to do. If I tell my, my case teacher, I say, even if you don't teach them any other thing, teach them the act of boldness, the act of self-confidence. It is very, very important. Sure. With that, you can go a very long way. Mm. And then, don't see yourself as somebody not having a sale in the society. Okay? You are somebody, if you really want to make things done, if you want to get things done in yeah, any yeah. environment, you can actually do it because everything yeah. in life is possible. Okay? And then for us Nigerians, let me tell you guys, see, stop selling your today or stop selling your tomorrow today. Whatever yeah. peanuts your leaders give to you to make you vote to, for them, even when you know that they are not competent enough to lead you, you mm. are wasting your time. You are selling your tomorrow. You are selling the tomorrow of your children, that of your grandchildren, or even your great-grandchildren. Africans as youth, you have what it takes to make the necessary change in this nation. The future of Africa lies in your own hands. What you do with it matters a lot. And I do hope you understand this simple point. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Before we actually go, finally, I would like us to go for a break. When we come back from a break, we'll be bye-bye to our viewers. So let's go for a break for now. Hello there. Looking for an African movie? Search no further. Leavenard African Movies TV is here for you. We are dedicated to the acceleration of African films, TV series, documentaries, and lots more. Explore our movies at home or on the go. Leavenard Movies is free to watch on Cleavenard.com. Don't miss this opportunity. Hurry now. Sign up and subscribe today. Hello there. Okay. Okay. 
Welcome viewers, it's still Afropolitics panel discussion on Kigna TV in Diaspora. My name is Stanley Junior and today we are looking at leadership in Africa. We've been discussing on this very important issue and we have Bongi and Franca on the panel today. They've been of help. They've, I mean, um, giving us insights on leadership, the dividends of leadership and um, critical issues affecting leadership in Africa on the side of our leaders, on the side of the people, the mineral resources, how it's being utilized by the people, the lack um, of sight of the leaders and the lack of performance, education, and um, sabotage in the academia and all have you and all of these things. It's very unfortunate that in Africa, we are still struggling to find our space when it comes to leadership. Until we get it right in the place of leadership, the future of Africa is bleak. Unfortunately, we have over 85% of people in the position of leadership in Africa who doesn't even know or have the know-how or how to take a lead, but they find themselves there because they have the means. And unfortunately, those who know how to take the lead don't have the means. And that is why we have what we have today. So um, on this point, uh, I would like to um, leave it for you, Bongi, to, to say a um, big bye for our viewers, Bongi and Franca. Over to you. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stanley. Uh, my name is Bongi Letmans, and you were here with us on Cleave Not TV in Diaspora. Don't forget to keep signing up because we're still having a lot of discussions and we're having a lot of shows for you to be inspired, for you to learn as well, because even education, it's here in, in Cleave Not. There's nothing that is not here. So keep on following us, keep on signing up for you to know even more. And even other previous uh, other previous shows, you can be able to still get them right here on Cleave Not TV in Diaspora. Keep on signing up. But from me, Bongi Gladness, is a good vibe for now. Okay, Frank. All right, thanks so much. All right, thanks so much. She has actually said all that I wanted to say. I'll just say, viewers, thank you for staying with us on today's edition. Hope to see you next time. Uh, but I still want to encourage you guys, keep signing up on www.clevina.com. It's a whole new world of enjoyment and celebrations. Have a nice time. Okay, viewers, you've heard it from them. It's Afro Politics Panel discussion on Clevina TV in Diaspora. My name is Stanley Gillian, but at this point, I want to say bye and thank you for watching. See you next time.